Thank you, Carrie. Mike Fulgens joining us now for our Precious Metals Market Report from Universal Coin & Bullion. How are you doing today? Great. Good to be here in your new set. Yeah, good to have you here. And you even brought a friend for us, uh, which is pretty cool. I, I figured I'd bring you a bobblehead, as many of the guests have brought other shows before, so yeah. I'm going to bring you your first bobblehead to put up back on your set. Hey, Brian and I will take that. We'll put that guy right back there. I think he'll be part of our decoration. Guns and gold. <laughs> there we go. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, why uh, the gold. There we go. Speaking of gold, look at that. That, that did a really good job. It's got a $20 that. gold piece and a, and a gun and on a $20 gold piece base and okay. plenty of gray hair, too. <laughs> There you go. Well, actually, why has the gold market been so volatile this year? If we can get well, that. Well, the selling of exchange-traded funds, that was a big part of gold going up. They began, came into existence in 2004, and a lot of paper gold was bought. So mm. people owned gold by owning a share of gold held in warehouses. Okay. Well, when stocks started doing better, some of the money moved out of high-performing gold, which has gone from $250 in the year 2001 uh -huh. to 1900 and people were writing a very uh, quickly increasing asset, and they moved into something else, which was stocks or the housing market. Mm. Now, overseas in China and other countries, they're still buying a lot of gold, India, but in this country, a lot of the paper asset buyers quit buying. But right now, the U.S. Mint has record uh, gold buying of physical gold, the China Mint, the Perth Mint. So we're having a battle between physical gold buyers and paper gold buyers and sellers. Okay. But China's introducing exchange-traded funds like we did here in 2004, mm -hmm. and we think that's going to bolster the market over the rest of the year. And what about nickels? Apparently, they make money too, right? <laughs> well, when I was a kid reading comic books, yeah. they had this 1913 nickel, which they only made five of. Wow. And we knew where four of them won, but one had disappeared. Okay. It, was in a, it turned out it was in a car wreck, and people didn't find it and realize it for many years. But when it went up for auction, this one of the five, it was the middle of five coins in quality. It was There were two better and two worse, and it brought over $3 million. It's the coin I always looked for as a kid, yeah. coin collector, but never found. But it was in a wreck with a collector, later found by their heirs. Many years later, they didn't know they had it. Wow. And it just brought over $3 million at auction. My goodness. Now, if you ever were to come across something like that, should you ever clean a coin, uh, anything like that, or just you, what you have at home? You know, I had some steel pennies when I was about 12, and I bought this miracle cleaning agent called Jewel Luster. And I put these steel pennies in it with a zinc coating, and they fizzed like Alka-Seltzer's and were ruined. You don't mm. clean a coin. It's a fine cleaning agent, but you got to know how to use it. Only have an expert ever clean a coin. And really, you can't unclean a coin or a lot of antiques. Leave it original. Yeah. It's the best chance it'll be high quality. Kind of just leave it how it is. Just then. leave it how it is. Tell me about Greg Bingham, a famous Houston Oiler uh, player. Of course, a lot of people remember that. But how prominent of a coin collector was he? Well, if you remember the Bum Phillips, Love You Blue Days with the yeah. Houston Oilers and the songs and everything, he was the star middle linebacker in the days of Jack Lambert and other great middle linebackers. And Greg's a great guy. He collects coins. He collects some of the finest tarnished or toned coins. Okay. And so Greg doesn't clean his coins. He looks for the ones with that gorgeous coloration and toning, as we call it, in the coin field. And Greg is known. There's a feature magazine article out now uh, on Greg as one of the prominent celebrity collectors, like Penny Marshall, Wayne Gretzky, oh, Laverne and Shirley. They <laughs> yes. all, she shows around coin shows with her little magnifying glass. There are a lot of famous collectors out there who collect coins, so it's it's a niche area that celebrities get into. And speaking of the tarnishing or toning, uh, is that good or bad? I mean, does that just happen naturally for it? Right, and we talk about work? don't clean it, yeah. but a lot of tarnishing, or as we call it in the field, toning, can be advantageous if the colors are pretty golds and blues and greens. Greg Bingham's collection has some of the most beautiful colors on coins you will ever see. Don't clean it. That tarnisher toning can actually enhance the value. Great. And if we have any questions, how can we get a hold of you? Well, you check with us at 800 459 COIN or go to the website at universalcoin.com. And unlike AARP said that Beaumont is the most unhappy place in the country, oh, yeah. we're like Duck Dynasty. Happy, happy, happy. In the new book, that <laughs> University of Vermont study yep. said Napa Valley was the happiest place, must be the wine. Yeah, but, the and maybe it's the heat here, but we're, we're going to make it happier around here. There we go. We love that. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate Thank that. You Thank you for having for me, Jessica. Us. Absolutely. Stay with us. We'll be right back.